think. Yes. <laughs> Always an experiment at the beginning. Um, hi. I dressed all in white today. Um, just a casual afternoon on a weekend. Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Barry Selby. This is my daily Facebook Live that will be also on YouTube. So if you're watching it there, that's where it started. Um, I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. Or as a friend of mine called me, I'm a guardian of the champion of the feminine, which is like, whoa, that's a title. And I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And sometimes they're for men, sometimes they're for women, sometimes they're for both. This one's kind of for both. And this one actually was thinking about it today. I was going to talk about spiritual relationship, but I thought, no, let me explain what a, what a, what a relationship can be. And then ask you if you're interested. So let me start with what it can be, and then you can tell me if you're interested. Uh, thanks for joining me, by the way, and thanks for being with me on this broadcast. This is my 373rd Facebook Live in a row. Um, so over a year's worth. I, I, my, my next goal is 400, which is pretty close, so that's going to be easy. Um, because there's content to talk about. It's like, it seems to be an endless supply of content about relationships. Amazing how that works. So, thanks for joining with me. Um, let's get into this topic, shall we? What a relationship can be. Let me start with what a relationship might not... Let me, let me say another way. Let me suggest a way a relationship might not be that you may not want. I think that makes sense. So, let's start with that. A relationship, and I've talked about this, actually, this is, this is realizing now, looking back over the last week's worth of broadcast, this is kind of a distillation of some of those topics, though this will be useful. Thank you, Barbara. Appreciate the, the, the love. Yes, it's, it's, it's a milestone for sure, hitting one year um, last week. Last week? Yes, this is another week from there. So, what a relationship can be is one where the two of you, and I'm going to try and keep this neutral without being gender-specific because... This is going to apply to gay or straight relationships. There's a relationship where both partners are fully invested. Both partners are both willing to be there. I'm realizing I can do the opposite pretty easily, saying what you don't want. So partners that don't care about each other or are only in it for themselves, not for each other. So let me, let me stay on track of what, what it can be, not what it can't be or shouldn't be. So first of all, both partners are invested. And I don't... <laughs> I've got to watch I'm going with this one. What I mean is that they're both, both partners are in it for the journey, for the duration, whether it, whether it, whatever that is, and they're owning their place in it. Because another part of this is ownership. And there are people in a relationship who don't own their role in it. And I want to speak to how it means to own your role in the relationship, which is basically that when you're with a partner, you take care of yourself enough to be fully autonomous, and you are taking care of your partner as an overflow from what you already do. This is not selfishness, this is actually a healthy way of being in a relationship because a relationship is not about the other person fixing you, making you feel better. Well, they can help you make you feel better as long as you start to work on yourself. So let, let me put that in context. So invested in the relationship, fully um, involved in taking care of yourself. A couple of other things that I'll throw on the table as well, which is you own your own stuff. Now, this is like a deeper one, and it's not the easy one for a lot of people to fake. It's a fake. It's not, it's not an easy one for people to take on. A lot of people are trained and used to the idea that when something goes wrong, you look to your partner as being the problem versus yourself. Or on the other side of things, some people look at themselves always as being at fault because they are a self-inflicted victim. Both sides apply. What I mean, though, in the sense of being really um, owning your stuff, is to be accountable in the sense that when stuff happens, and if you know you've got a role to play in what happened that didn't work out well, you stand in front of the truth, or you stand in the truth. And you don't, you don't, you don't hide the secrets from your partner. You don't hide the... You mean, yes. <laughs> yes, Barbara, if you're, if you're on the planet and you're living your life, you have stuff like we all have stuff. You mean I have stuff. In, yeah, exactly. We all have stuff. And I mean stuff in the sense of baggage, emotional stuff, content, um, challenges preferences, behaviors, some rules and things that happen where when things go wrong, we tend to um, eject or, um, um, what's the one looking for? We, t we tend to avoid taking responsibility. Now, I know you've never done that. I know I have, I'm being honest about this. And most people have a relationship where they're not willing to take responsibility for their um, instigation of the problem. There's an old thing I learned in one of the seminars. This is an insight seminars back in the 80s. I learned this one about how the ability to respond is a key part of being a conscious being, conscious person, an awake 
weakened person. And that comes from a place of understanding that everything we're involved in, when, when things go wrong or when things go good, we play a role in it where we either create it, we promote it, or allow it. CPA for short, it's a, it's a teaching they have. And the idea being is that when you're involved in some situation where something happens and maybe you upset somebody or maybe somebody gets upset with you, it might be all their stuff. But one of three things, whether it's create, promote, promote or allow, are involved in that. Actions or lack of them. Yes, Barbara, actions or lack of them is some part of that. So let me explain the create, promote or allow piece. When something happens, we either fully created it ourselves and we made it happen or we promoted it by seeing it happen and we didn't do anything about it and we go, oops. Or we allowed it because we didn't actually um, step into the role of stopping it. We saw it go by and go, oh, actually, no, let me back up a second. Promote and allow a difference. Let me qualify what the differences are. Oh, well, allowance is the one way basically you just witness something happen and then you go, I should have stepped in, but I didn't. Promote is where you see something happening and you basically, um, you egg it on. You invite it. You... Um, you promote it. So you didn't actually start the whole thing, but you certainly didn't get out of the way of it, and you certainly didn't um, redirect it. So that's a long way of saying that when you're in a relationship, it's about owning your stuff, taking care of your own business, so you can be fully expressing... Sorry, I'm just checking to make sure that I've got the screen as bright as it's going to be. Okay. Um, you're actually owning your space in the relationship. Now, a couple of other pieces. Another part of a relationship is that your life and the relationship and what you're about in the world are not the same thing. Some people get into a relationship where they're so um, enmeshed in that relationship, and they're usually enmeshed intentionally, like codependence, that nothing exists beyond the relationship. And I'm realizing I'm already covering three chapters in my book. <laughs> of course. Where we give up everything else for the relationship. So a healthy relationship is one where you don't exclude all your friends suddenly. You know, there are people who get into a relationship where they... They give up everything else around them except for the relationship. That person becomes their sole focus and that relationship is everything. So they don't talk to their family, they don't talk to their friends, they don't keep their social engagements anymore, they drop everything for the relationship. Not healthy. That actually is a detriment to your life to put relationship above everything else. And in fact, put your relationship instead of everything else. So to understand that relationship is something you add to what you're already doing. Yes, this may sound like a novel approach, but take a relationship and, and add it to what you're already doing so that it, is, it includes what everything else you already do. So you still maintain your social engagements. You still maintain what you do as service. You still maintain your connections with your friends and your family. And the relationship still takes a priority, but as, an, as a, a priority on the list, not to exclude the list. You get my point. So that's another part. Another piece of a healthy relationship, a relationship can also be one where your partner is actually your best and most avid cheerleader. And you are for them. Relationship can be so powerful when the two of you are invested in each other's success. Now, a lot of people don't have that. A lot of times it's either it doesn't happen or it's just one-sided. But I'm saying in a healthy relationship, both partners are focusing on both partners' successes, intentionally helping each other, which is a massive win-win for everybody. And frankly, it really um, elevates the relationship to another level. You can have that. That's another piece. Um, there's another piece I want to add to it. Oh, Yes. What relationship can also be is a deepening of your opening to your own intimacy and expression. Mm, try that one on. And don't just mean sex, by the way, because some people go, oh, that means sex. Like, no. Well, yes and no. It can include that. But truly, a healthy and um, expressive relationship is one where the intimacy and the openness to be transparent, to be that easily seen by your partner, that there's nothing in the way for them and vice versa, nothing in the way for you for to see them, is a much higher level of healthy relationship than only in the past. Most people look at a relationship where they just look at what they can get or look at what they want to take from the relationship. They don't see how much they can participate and open up to the possibility in the relationship. I'm suggesting that an intimacy beyond even your, your, um, your greatest expectation is possible for you to have in a relationship. You can have this openness and vulnerability and intimacy that transcends anything you've done before if you have a partner you can play to do that with. This does require participation on both sides, obviously. There's another one. That's more set five now, or six? Let me track of these. I'm going to have to go back and make notes on what I said. This is all coming through, so it's not scripted or planned. No bullet points or, or um, flashcards. This is just what's coming through. Um, another piece I would recommend for a healthy or what's possible in a relationship 
And he's, well, this is one too. Even though I recommend this is what you do with a coach or a therapist, in a relationship, you can actually help each other heal deep wounds. And it's actually against what I said earlier, so in another broadcast. So I'm going to say it this way. Because the challenge with this, if you're looking to have this possibility of growth in a relationship, the safety to do that sometimes means that you need to refer your partner to actually a professional. Because sometimes it feels like you say, I can help my partner through anything and everything, and all those wounds that come up from the past, I'll help them heal it. It's kind of like being an unlicensed professional, or I should say it's being an amateur unlicensed coach. It can be dangerous. Not only can it be we don't do it effectively, but secondly, you become a coach-client relationship partner, which is not what you want. So having said that, what you can do for your partner is have this place inside where your safety you provide for your partner allows them to go deeper than they've ever done before. So when they do get more open to the intimacy, the vulnerability, the connection, and that safety inside, the wounds that are buried deep inside can come out for healing. Again, those wounds may need to be helped by a professional, like myself, or a therapist, or a coach, but you providing that space makes it safe enough where they can be willing to pursue that help, uh, that, that desire for healing. And this is the thing, that the depth you can hold for your partner is what's going to allow that to come up for healing and for allow your partner to trust you enough to get it healed because some people aren't willing to let that stuff up because they don't trust their partner to be safe with them. You get, I'm, going, I'm making a circle around this, but you're making a point about I'm making. I think you get my point about this. This is a profound part of a relationship where the depth of available healing that can happen by obviously holding the space, but also by creating the space for your partner to take care of themselves to heal, is paramount. Um, that's number seven or six. I keep track of which one it is. All right, so a couple more to throw on the table before I wrap this up. Um, hmm, let's see what else is out there. So relationship qualities, you can actually have a relationship. I mentioned about being each other's cheerleaders. It's also being, about being, some friends of mine talk about this, um, being like partners in crime, in the sense that what you do, and I don't mean it literally, please bear with me, but the meaning that, that you're in it together, that there's a willingness to support each other in whatever the dream is that you want to do together. And it might be something where you decide you want to work together on a service project where you want to maybe help with the homeless or with animal shelters or something else, or it might be to craft a new business, or it might be to change your back garden. I mean, anything's possible. But it's about the idea that you collaborate. And that partners in, not partners in crime, but partners in time, partners in, in shyness, a couple of friends might call it, is a powerful place to be because it is a place where you can really decide to be in unity together and aligned with mission and purpose going the same direction. That's a really big one for a lot of people because a lot of people have relationships where they have their life separate, as I mentioned earlier, but they don't come together on the deeper stuff sometimes. And for me personally, this is one of my must-haves, is that partners in, in shine, partners in life, partners in, I'm going to the word for it, but that partnership which is so much about supporting and working together on, on destiny, on life-changing goals, whatever that is, that's, that's one of mine. So if that's for you, I recommend it and hold on to it. Don't let it go. All right, let me see if there's anything else before I wrap up. Um, I know I've got some big strokes. And, and the reality is what I'm telling you here is just a short list of some of the things that might be of use to you for looking at what relationship can be. But I'm also aware there's a lot more available. I mean, this list could be thousands of things, and frankly, because other things that can throw in there as inclusion can be um, having immense trust with each other, being authentic with each other, being transparent and vulnerable with each other, being there for each other no matter what, to help each other through any challenge, any problem, any trauma, anything, because you know you're there for them. That's kind of a recap of what I said. It can also be where you can just basically enjoy each other's company for the fun of playing together, exploring books together, learning and growing and being in seminars together. It could be where you decide that you want to discover, here's a key, what each other's love language is and learn how to practice the love language to help them. That's Gary, Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, by the way. Um, there's so much that can be explored. But my intention with this broadcast is to suggest to you that maybe you could raise your, your sights on what quality of relationship you want to attract or be in or participate in or, or pursue. This is the good stuff. And I would say in some ways this is what I would call a spiritual relationship. Not just a regular relationship, but a really truly deeply spiritual, fulfilling, passionate relationship that will change your life. And if it isn't life-changing, maybe it ain't enough. <laughs> 
And as I said earlier, I did mention that I've, I've probably covered about three or four chapters from my book. So if you haven't heard my, about my book, let me quickly plug that in, which is called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. And really when I think about rebranding it, it's really 50 ways to be a better lover in the sense that it's about how to be a healthy partner in a relationship, how to attract what you want, how to have an amazing relationship. If you want to find out more about that, it's in softcover, ebook, and Kindle. You can go to my website, which is barryselby.com, and click on the uh, best-selling book link, or actually you can just go to barryselby.com forward slash book. My name, forward slash book. Easy enough. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about this work, by the way, and how I can help you get what you want in a relationship, you can get that from my website as well, which shortcut is barryselby.com forward slash chat. Not book, but chat. Or if you're on my website, perusing around my website, you can find them under the Let's Chat button on the navigation bar. Um, this is one of my daily broadcasts, number 373, as I mentioned. If you want to find them my other broadcasts, because they are all listed collectively on my uh, business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. And I also put this on YouTube, so you're watching it there. That's why it was called Facebook Live first, because that's where I do it first, then I put it onto YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. The, play, the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Again, if you want help, find, reach out to me. If you go, and, and let me do this. Your homework, because <laughs> I do give homework, is to come up with at least one or two additional qualities of a really powerful, amazing relationship, and then share them in the comments below. I want to hear what you think makes a really powerful relationship. Add it to the list of what I've already suggested and build a list for yourself. That's your homework. Um, I think that's it. Have a wonderful Saturday. Thanks for being with me, and I'm glad you were here. If you didn't come in at the beginning, please watch from the beginning. There's some rich possible content, um, com content for you. And uh, I think that's it. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. It'll be not be 374. Who knows what that'll be. Topics just suggest themselves as we go through. Um, you're practicing the homework of reframing your thoughts of men. Nice one, Barbara. That's good. Um, and Barbara, if you want some help, you know how to find me. Reach out to me. And uh, thanks for joining me. And if you just come into the broadcast, thank you for being here. I'm signing off. So come, come back and watch the replay. I'll see you again tomorrow, tomorrow being Sunday. And it'll be another afternoon, probably casual broadcast again. And uh, that's it. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon.